Closer to Arizona and Sonora, Mexico, voters there also push Morena candidates to victory in what is historically a conservative state. Murphy Woodhouse covers trade between Arizona and Sonora for KJZZ in Phoenix. He joins us now from Hermosillo. Murphy, good to see you. Nice to chat. Tell me how significant it, the election of Manuel Lopez Obrador is in a place like Sonora, which is traditionally conservative. The quite sweeping victory seen nationally for AMLO, uh, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, and uh, his coalition and party Morena uh, was, uh, was mirrored here in Sonora. Uh, and in fact, in some ways, was uh, was was even uh, uh, more more convincing uh, nationwide. Uh, he got a little over 53 percent of the vote, uh, but here in Sonora, according to the final uh, uh, the final tallies uh, from the National Election Office, uh, just shy of 60 percent. And again, just to put that in perspective, that that's not just him against one other candidate. Uh, that, that's him against uh, two other candidates representing mainstream parties, uh, as well as a a fourth. Uh, independent candidate, so uh, just a, a, a quite wide margin. Any skepticism about his ability to actually do the things he said he would while he was on the campaign? Uh, he certainly made a lot of, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, very strong uh, promises. Uh, you know, uh, among among the many things that he has proposed is increasing the minimum wage, doubling pensions for elderly Mexicans, um, and uh, uh, at least during some of the debates that I watched. Um, he, he puts a lot of hope in uh, being able to pay for a lot of those efforts by reducing uh, the corruption that he and, and many Mexicans see as, as quite endemic and widespread uh, in, uh, in, in the country. But of course, there are those who uh, are skeptical that that would be enough to carry out what is undoubtedly a, a very ambitious uh, agenda. All right, Murphy, there's some conversation from AMLO about his, his policies or his proposals for the border. During the campaign, uh, uh, AMLO did propose a number of changes uh, for the border region uh, with the idea of improving the economic situation there and also very, uh, very explicitly uh, trying to make it easier for Mexican nationals uh, to, to make a life for themselves and their families in Mexico without having to resort uh, to migration. Uh, among them is uh, you know, significantly cutting some of the taxes in the border area and also significantly reducing some of the customs, uh, in, uh, I guess not enforcement, but certainly making it easier uh, for, for goods to go back and forth, uh, again, with the idea being to really promote uh, economic development uh, in, that, in that part of the country. And that could certainly, if, if uh, those ideas do come to fruition, could certainly have major impacts on, on the Arizona-Sonora relationship. Uh, he's also talked about uh, measures to increase the minimum wage and salaries uh, in, in, in the border region as well, which would obviously have uh, a number of impacts. For the next three years, Sonora will continue to have a very conservative governor. How likely is it the Morena party can actually gain any traction during that time under Governor Pavlovich's leadership? The remainder of her term, uh, uh, Morena will have uh, a lot of power uh, in, in the legislature and the state high-ranking Morena officials that we've spoken to or specifically my colleague Kendall Bluss has spoken to, they made the point uh, that you know, we, we seek a, a respectful uh, a, a relationship of mutual respect with the governor's office but also uh, you know, we, are, we are going to insist on uh, a balance of powers. Governor Pavlovich, Governor Ducey have a very strong relationship here, Arizona, Sonora, they've dubbed it the mega region. How likely is it that that can continue despite the presidential shift that we've seen and then also with the elephant in the room of NAFTA renegotiations taking place? So the, the Marina officials that we've spoken to have said nothing but uh, that, that it is their desire to, to continue uh, the very strong relationship between uh, Arizona uh, and Sonora. Uh, and then, as you, as you mentioned, at the, at, the, at the national level, with ongoing NAFTA renegotiations, AMLO has signaled that you know, he intends to be a meaningful participant in those negotiations. Uh, I believe he will have a representative uh, during those negotiations, but there is this kind of uh, lengthy interim period between the election and when he'll actually take the presidency. He will not take the presidency until late, uh, late this year, so obviously a lot of things can occur uh, between now and then as far as NAFTA re renegotiations. Uh, but again, all, all the signals that we're getting from Morena officials is that uh, uh, they want nothing but a, a continued strong relationship and positive relationship between uh, both Arizona and Sonora and uh, Mexico uh, and, and, uh, and the United States more broadly. Okay, Murphy Woodhouse from KJZZ. He is in Hermosillo. Thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.